I love Elden Ring, I love Shadow of the Earth Tree, and I love the Divine Beast Dancing Lion, especially when he does this. When I saw him for the first time, I knew I had to sculpt him. At first, it was a bit difficult to notice what was going on inside the costume, but fortunately, now we have a clear understanding of what he looks like without it. And as you can see, for this project, I had to sculpt two guys. Of course, for things that have this level of complexity, I always use a guide, and when it comes to human figures, I usually make an armature, but this time I said f*** it, as I felt that using the same technique I used for Ultron of sculpting each part separately to eventually attach them together would work. And of course, there is no better way to start sculpting a FromSoft character than with the feet. At this point, my main concern was to get the general shape of each part. It didn't matter if I didn't properly define muscle or if I didn't get each little vein or wrinkle, all those little details could be added once each piece dried. As I said, the general shape was the only thing I had in mind. Of course, the legs and arms received a bit more care than the torso because this one was going to be covered by the costume, so it didn't matter if it ended up looking like shit. no one will notice. Another thing that won't be noticed is the head, and the person who created the original model knew that because both of these heads are used balls. So yeah, this may look lazy, but it's accurate to the source material. Thanks, FromSoft. Unfortunately, his hands are exposed and they're right up front, so they have to look good. Thank you from soft. By the way, even though for most of the fight he's just jumping around, I decided I wanted to pose him like this. I just love how menacing he looks. After a couple of hours, each part had already hardened a bit, so I decided to glue them together, but at this point I realized something terrible. In order to place the arms and the hands correctly, I needed to have the lion head already done, because if I placed the arms at that moment, without having the final size of the head, I ran the risk of leaving them too closed or too open. So I decided to leave this piece drying even more, while I worked on the head. I started with the top part by, again, trying to get the general shape of it without any details, and then when it dried, guess what? I added the details. Starting with this flat worm that would become the upper teeth, later on I added little lumps of clay that would help me to define some of the smaller shapes, then I made his beautiful eyes, his cute kitty nose, and the lower jaw, which wasn't easy to make thanks to the extra row of teeth, but thanks to the editing, you won't be able to see my pain. Fortunately for me, next step was pretty easy. Nice. And for the texture, I just place a bunch of thin layers of fresh clay on top and use the needle to kinda draw all of that fur. For each horn, I started by making a little cone, which got bended, pinched, textured and glued. Yeah, they were easy to make. And with the lion head finished and in place, I was able to finally attach the hands on the arms and while you won't be able to see most of his body once he's finished, I still wanted to add some of the main muscles that are missing, like his shoulders and butt cheeks. Then it was time to blend each part into each other with fresh clay and water, and even though most of the clay is already hardened, it is nothing compared to the power of a needle, as this was the main tool I used to carve all the wrinkles of his skin. And that's pretty much it for guy number one. For guy number two, the process is pretty much the same, the only difference is the pose, so let's just speedrun this bit. At this point I wanted to paint what I had sculpted so far before adding more stuff and making these guys harder to handle, and while I used colored clay, my intention was to use this as a base tone and not the final tone. I feel like paint makes the colors brighter, and it is excellent in order to highlight some of the details as it gives me the opportunity to add more contrast between the tones by adding dry brushes and washes and all that, and of course no one wants to see that, so next step is to make the first layers of his costume starting with this one. For that I'm going to flatten some red clay on a cutting board, then I'll take these pants and by carefully putting a bit of pressure on top of the clay with the pants on top, I'll transfer the fabric texture onto the clay. And before gluing it to the body, I'll pinch it here and there in order to give it some folds. 
the lower edges of these ropes have a bunch of these things. Now, there's a lot of them, and I figured that making them one by one would take me a lot of time. Fortunately, not only am I talented and extremely sexy, but I'm also really, really smart. So with the help of a little strip I cut from an old folder, I made this little cookie cutter thing with the shape of these things and used it to cut them out of a previously flattened sheet of clay. Then I gave them some details with the help of a needle and glued them in place. The next layer goes on top of his butt armor, so next step is to make his butt armor, which consists of 12 separate pieces connected by a bunch of little rings. I'm gonna start with this one by flattening some grey clay and boom, it's done. Then I made these rectangles by, again, flattening some grey clay, then I used this cutter to cut out the rectangle shape, this ball of aluminum foil to give them some texture, this needle to draw those lines, and these meat tools to add those... Uh, words? Then I made the other pieces, this followed the same steps of flattening, cutting, adding details, and boom, that's it. And finally, for the rings, I used two pen caps, one slightly wider than the other, and pressed them just like that on a previously flattened sheet of clay. And then it was time to glue all these pieces together. And with his butt armor in place, I was able to make the next layer of his costume. This one followed the same steps as the other ones, but this one had way more folds and I made it in two parts that got attached in the middle and for now I'm gonna leave him like this since the next layer goes on top of the one that's connecting them and I'd rather add the remaining details on the front guy before that. Starting with some pieces of cloth here, here and here. He also has a bunch of plates here and on both sides he has another plate that's larger and a bit more intricate and on top of that he has two pieces of cloth and on top of those he has another plate. Okay, and now we move on to the worst part of this whole f***ing thing. Whatever the f*** this is. Okay, so getting the general shape was actually pretty easy. Nothing special here, but these details, oh god. First I thought about making a bunch of long thin worms in order to place them one by one, but I figured that doing that would take me a lot of time. Fortunately, not only am I talented and extremely sexy, but I'm also really really smart. So with the help of this thing and some polymer clay, I made these little stamps that were fairly easy to make. So I cut this shape once again, pressed these stamps on it, and yeah, that actually looks pretty great. Now I just have to add some additional details like like those little pieces and those kind of tree branches and with that it was ready to be stuck in place. Sculpturally speaking, the only things missing at this point were the mane, these horns and the remaining cloth. Now, in order to place the mane I needed to know where these horns would be and in order to place the horns I needed to have this piece of cloth in place and in order to put this piece of cloth I needed to have the cloth connecting both bodies in place first. So, and with that I was able to add this piece, both of these pieces, and all the horns on his back. I realized that adding the mane at this point would make some parts harder to reach with a paintbrush, so I started to add some washes all over the red areas. Of course, as the base tone is already there, there wasn't any need to apply a full coat of paint, I just wanted to enhance the details and for that adding some washes and dry brushing it here and there was more than enough, except for that thing, that thing needed a full coat of paint. While I was painting it, I noticed how weak, stupid and pathetic this middle part was, and while it wasn't part of my original plan, I figured that making a base would make this thing a bit more stable. So once it was painted, I placed it on a piece of paper and drew an approximate size for the base. The Dancing Lion's boss room has some circles and stuff on the floor, so I drew those too. Then I flattened a bunch of clay and gave it the rectangle shape I wanted. And by cutting the drawing and using these pieces as guides, I started to place all these little tiles with some of these cookie cutter things I made off camera, and I also added some of these bigger tiles with a needle, then I left it drying and I started to work on the other details, like these flower looking things. For this I flattened some clay, gave it some texture, once it dried I transferred this drawing onto the clay, cut it, added those lines with a needle, and yeah, that was it.
Once the base dried, I glued them in place, cut off the excess of this one and added the other tiles by flattening some clay worms on top of it. Then I textured them, added those lines and with that the base was ready to be painted. Three screws, three holes, a bit of epoxy and a good amount of glue was more than enough to secure the lion onto the base. And now we can move on to the main by texturing and gluing a bunch of little snakes on his back and on top of his head. He also has a couple of braids on each side. And finally a quick wash followed by a quick dry brush will make the mane look cool and sick and hip and fab and fresh. And I also painted those things, I almost forgot about those. Okay, that's it! Unfortunately I won't be able to show you a size comparison with Melania. I sold her a while ago, but I was able to get this photo with both of them, so yep. As always, uh, if you liked it, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Give me your money on Patreon, please, I am poor. Uh, yeah, that's it. Bye, 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 bye.